Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Ajo here with KissAnalog.com. David, a subscriber, asked a question. Can I explain what a Zobo network is or how it works? So that's what we're going to do today. Um, so a Zobo network um, used commonly in audio amplifier outputs. Uh, we're going to cover that. It was put out by Otto Zobel, a uh, paper he wrote, I think, in 1923 for Bell Laboratories. And he was working on, he really never really said anything about audio designs or audio amplifiers. His, um, this network or this filter was designed for uh, Bell Laboratories, who was into telephones, AT&T now, you know. So... Um, what he wanted to do was, you know, you have all these long lines going out to these telephones and he wanted to get the impedance basically flattened out to make it a lot easier to communicate over. So he came out with this network and that's exactly what it did. It makes, say for instance, you know, maybe in our world, an audio world, uh, if you want 8 ohms across the frequency band um, and you're tied into a, an inductor and a speaker, then you can do this, something like that. So that's what he did. So let's try to explain that. First I'm going to kind of just sit here and kind of discuss it and then I'm going to show you some, some schematic drawings to further kind of jump into it. But I want to just kind of talk it through right now. Uh, basically what he did is he said, well, if you take let's say you have a speaker and a speaker um, driver looks like an inductance right uh, but it also you know we know it is in ohms like four ohms eight ohms resistive ohms so um so you could you could break down a speaker into an inductor and a resistor so let's just say that that's what we have an inductor and a resistor in series. That's our speaker. That's what it looks like, okay? And um, and so that's impedance. And so let's say that we have an 8 ohm resistor and an inductor. And you know we don't know what the inductance of the of this speaker is right now. But if we wanted to drive this with an amplifier at low frequencies. It, this inductor is going to look different than at high frequencies. Inductors are like chokes, right? So at high frequencies, they want to uh, stop current flow. They want to stop the change of current. So they choke it off. So the higher the frequency is, the more impedance it looks like. So let's say at a real high frequency, this would look like maybe an open circuit, ideal, you know, at extreme high frequency. And a very low frequency it would impede current flow very little so um, the resistor here you'd see basically your 8 ohm resistance okay um, and so that's what an inductor in series with the resistor kind of looks like across the frequency band um, so what you do is you put another um, two elements a resistor and a capacitor in parallel to this and a capacitor is the opposite of an inductor, right? And the resistor um, would turn out to be the same resistance as this. You put those in parallel to them and it helps balance it out in a way that you end up getting 8 ohms across the frequency band. That's the idea, okay? That's, I mean, in simple terms, that's the idea. So, now the real Zobel network, or at least one of the Zobel networks, was these two parallel branches. But in between those two parallel branches, if you tied from here to the middle of this resistor capacitor combination next to it, and you put a, a, an impedance in between that, then you have a, like an H shape, and that's an H bridge. So in that Zobel network, that center impedance device uh, should have zero current flowing when everything's equalized, okay? So that's kind of a, a parameter or a characteristic of, of the Zobel network. Um, we're gonna talk about this. I'm gonna show you some some of the 
you know, math and, and, and that. I just want to kind of explain it that with resistor and a capacitor in series, it's the opposite of the inductor. A capacitor, uh, high frequency, looks like it's short, okay? Um, at low frequencies, the capacitor builds up current on the plate slowly, and it's kind of like a dam almost. It, it, the current flow stops, okay? But at high frequencies, when it keeps on changing, it, then it becomes like it's short. So when you look at an impedance network with a capacitor and a resistor at high frequencies, Think of that capacitor as a short, and you have the resistor, that's all you have. At low frequencies, um, the capacitor is open, and then it's out of the circuit, okay? If it's in parallel with the opposite, an inductor, the inductor is going to behave just the opposite, inversely, proportional, you know, depending on the value of these, the capacitor and the inductor. So, um, in between those high frequencies and low frequencies, there's going to be this transitional thing, right? And so, um, if you select the parts right, then that transition works so that you have, with the capacitor, you have, say, an 8 ohm resistor, and with the inductor, you have an 8 ohm resistor. Um, in between, they're going to they're always going to look like 8 ohms. So when you look across the whole frequency band, it looks like an 8 ohm low. And that's the beauty of it. And that's why it's used. Um, it gets a little more complex than that though because of the placement. Um, so when you place on the output of an amplifier, really to, to be more ideal, what you do is you place that in front of say a bass speaker or subwoofer or uh, mid-range speaker okay and then you can match it to that speaker but when you put it on the output of the amplifier you have a complex impedance out there uh, so it still works though it's interesting it still works and um, so some people call it the bush row uh, uh, cell it's a French name I'm sure I'm just hammering that name uh, Bouchereau, I'll show you the spelling, Bouchereau cell. Um, so the Zobo network, a lot of people think of it as a Bouchereau cell when it's used at the output of a, an amplifier. And what it turns out that, um, it, you know, when you first look at it, you think, oh, they're just kind of winging it and they're just throwing values out there. But it turns out that you know, there's been some very good people looking into this, and uh, um, and a 0.1 microfarad capacitor with an 8 to 10 ohm resistor seems to work, or I think it's 6 to 10 ohms actually. Uh, 6 to 10 ohms with a 0.1 microfarad capacitor seems to seems to be a good combination, and we're going to talk about that, and I'll, I'll show you some stuff here, and we're going to make this kind of a short video, kind of an introductory video to this. Uh, but basically, hopefully, it gives you the, kind of an understanding of what's going on. And then in the more complex world, we're going to go look at... We're, we'll do another video where things get a little bit more complex, and, and we'll, we'll kind of jump into that and, and see if there's any value in that. But I think the biggest value is just understanding what people have been doing for a long time and kind of getting a gist of why that works and, and why that is. Okay? So... Okay, I'll bring you over here and kind of cover this thing again with some math in front of us. Maybe it makes more sense, okay? All right, thanks. Oh, and by the way, um, there is a lot of talk about... Um, the, so there's some misnomers. There's, there's a lot of confusion, I think, around a Zobo network. Um, some people think that it was made to stabilize the network. That's not why it was done. It was done to give a, I mean, okay, so in one sense you can say that, but in, in the sense that some people use that term is they think it's to stabilize the feedback of an amplifier, and that's not why it was designed. That's not what it was meant for. Although, you know, that may be a, a benefit of it, but that's not really, the, bene, the, real, the real reason was to, like I say, across a wide bandwidth, to give a steady impedance so that 
you know, it's a lot easier to drive. Not so much that it's going to keep your amplifier from going, you know, being in, unstable. Okay. Um, so here, let's come over here and take a look at this. Uh, hey, by the way, hopefully this is useful. And thanks, David, for bringing this up. This is a great subject. And thumbs up to David. All right, here's our Zobo network. And it was, again, named after Otto Zobel, uh, the Bell Labs. Uh, he lived from 1887 to 1970. It was in 1923, I believe, when he wrote the paper about his Zobel, uh, that brought about this uh, Zobel uh, network, okay? And uh, this is one of the networks. Um, and what it does is it balances out your load so that you uh, you have a constant ZO. So let's say your ZO, you know, Z is for impedance, right? That kind of covers everything, resistance, reactants, and, uh, you know, from capacitors or from inductors, resistors. So Z is just impedance, right? So, so you know what? Let's just say that... Um, ZO, we're going to say it's equal to R, and let's just say we want it to be an 8 ohm speaker, okay? So we're going to make these guys 8 ohms, all right? And then this is the inductance of your, of your speaker, and this would be the capacitor. So this will end up being a C, and this would be a inductor, all right? And this is the output of your amplifier. Now, ZB will actually disappear. It's not even in the circuit. So what you see, you know, is you'll see a network like this. But imagine this. Imagine these are all 8 ohm resistors. Every one of these are 8 ohms. Well, if you had, for instance, 10 volts here. Uh, and so you have 10 volts right here. If this is 8 ohms at 8 ohms, then it's a voltage divider, right? And so you end up with 5 ohm, or five volts here and 5 volts here. It divides evenly. And so from here to here, let's say this is our ground reference, you'd have 5 volts. Same thing here, 8 ohms, 8 ohms, you'd have uh, 5 volts. So if you have 5 volts here and 5 volts here, there is no voltage potential here. So, you know, that's how you get voltage, right? If this is your ground reference, it'd be zero here, five volts here, 10 here, zero, five, 10. So five and five, you have, you know, five minus five is zero. You have zero volts across this, this element here. So we just remove him from the circuit. So we look at this as a speaker and we look at this as our Zobel network, okay? So we put an inductor and capacitor. Now, depending on the frequency, this guy might be eight ohms. Let's say that at a certain frequency, this inductor is eight ohms and this capacitor is eight ohms. Well, then it's all balanced. Well, as the frequency goes up, this eight ohms, the capacitor starts looking like it. Remember, at high frequency, this guy's gonna go to short. So, you know, as the frequency goes up, his, his Z goes down, and this Z goes up, okay? So he's moving towards an open, and this guy's moving towards a short. So at high frequencies, if this becomes an open, then you have, um, you know, a really highly inductive circuit, because all your circuit sees is inductance. It doesn't even see this resistor, because this guy is so large in value. So that's a very inductive circuit. All right, so as the frequency goes up, this inductor, or the Z of the inductor, starts to it'd be really X of L, right? So X of L goes up in value, so Z goes up. So it starts looking like, you know, large ohms, right? Big ohms. And this Z starts looking like a little ohm. It starts to go to short at high frequency. So at high frequency, without the Zobel uh, network in there, with only the speaker, 
it would look very inductive, like a really high ohm speaker. It, it, at high frequency, it looked like a big inductor out here. So the amplifier could be unstable. Um, and that's where, you know, even though this is called a Zobo, so Bouchereau, he was into uh, making impedance and power circuits stable. And that's why this is referred to as Bouchereau cell, even though it has some of the characteristics of a Zobo network. Okay. Um, so it's just kind of, you know, naming convention. And I, it's kind of where these networks originated from, I guess. Um, but the idea is the same. Is this inductor goes real high, um, this starts looking like a real high ohm. Okay. And so we want the amplifier to see eight ohms all the time. Well, this is going to short. So if it was a short, it would be eight ohms here. So now we have our eight ohms. But in between, as the frequency is going up, there's this balance period where this guy starts to go higher and this starts going lower. And as this goes lower, the eight ohms here starts becoming more significant and vice versa. As the frequency starts going down in frequency, now the capacitor starts to go up in impedance. It goes to larger impedance and this guy starts going down. So now this guy, once he gets low enough, all you have left is eight ohms here. And over here, um, the, this starts to go open circuit. So that that's out of the circuits, but now you're back to eight ohms. So you, you're always, it's like a teeter totter. You're balanced. You know, when you're balanced, you, you have eight ohms and you always have eight ohms as you move around. So we'll discuss and use some more math to kind of explain that. Um, but here's kind of the formula. Um, on this side we have ZO and Z prime. It might be kind of hard to see the little prime thing there. They just call that prime just to make it different than Z. But you have ZO over Z prime, right? Z over Z prime is equal to Z over ZO. Z over ZO. Okay. So you can imagine if ZO was equal to one in both these cases, it'd just be one over Z prime is equal to Z over, so it'd be just inversely proportional. Z over one or one over Z prime. So if, if that happened, it's just, it, they're just inversely proportional, okay? Now let me slide it over to our application. Our application is a speaker. Here's our speaker here, and there's our, our Z. And that's an inductor here, and our Z is a capacitor prime here. And there's our R and there's our R. It could be eight, it could be four, it could be two, it could be whatever ohms we want. Uh, I mean, prac you know, within some limits, I guess, some bounds, but so C prime, to calculate that so that it balances out with this value, you use this. It's L, your inductance of your speaker, divided by your resistance squared. And that's how you come up with this value. Let's just put down some values for this. Um, R, okay, like I said before, said before, the C, C prime is, is usually in the neighborhood of well, usually it's just chosen as a 0 0.1 microfarad, okay? That's probably, that's a very common value. And then R is usually from five or say 4.7 ohm. And, I, and actually, I'll tell you what, I'm getting um, to 10 ohms. Um, I'm getting these values from Douglas Self book. Um, and I've seen it other places as well. I've seen five to 10 ohms, but Douglas Self, he calls out 4.7 to 10 ohms. Um, and that was in his 2013 edition. Um, this It was actually the sixth edition in 2013. Okay. So that's Douglas Self. He, he's a well-known audio amplifier designer. It's it, 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 it kind of falls in the area that I've seen other writings. Um, so 
when you look at this, roughly, if you if you put this capacitor in here and you solve now remember your R is squared, so let's say it's five, just to make math easy. Five squared is twenty-five. Now if you put ten in there, ten squared is one hundred. So obviously four times bigger than twenty-five. So the range of the inductor varies like let's say a 5x range. So within a 5x range, um, you're going to, it, you know, let's say you put an 8 ohm resistor in each one of these spots, you're, you're going to get it. Okay, once you find out your induct, what your value of your inductor is, you can swing it around here to one of these values. You might even come up with something completely different. But generally, this gives you a 5x swing in value. Using these values, you range somewhere around two and a half microhenries to ten microhenries. So, so that that would balance it out. So let's just say that we were, we did want this to be eight ohms. If we calculated that for inductance, that would come out to six point four with eight ohms. So if R is equal to eight ohms, then L would be six point four microhenries. Really, you do this backwards, right? You you would you would um, look at your specification for your speaker and put the inductor in there and come out with your resistor value. But I was just showing an example. If it was eight ohms, I mean, if it was six point four microhenries, it'd come out exactly your eight ohms. Okay, so that's just the example I was giving. Um, but all right, so I think that gives you an idea of how the how the Boschereau cell works or more commonly known as the Zobel the Zobel uh, network okay now Boschereau his name is Paul Boschereau he lived from 1869 to 1943 he was actually a little bit younger than Mr. Otto Zobel all right we're going to go into a little bit more about the specifics of this for instance, in a lot of the outputs you see, you'll see that inductor here with a resistor in parallel, right? So we'll cover that next time, okay? And we'll, we'll talk about that. All right, hey, give David and me a thumbs up if you like this. Thanks, guys. And by the way, if you have any input, anything you'd like to understand or see or further explanation or you have some information of your own please share in the comments below please share thanks guys